but they also take out the sound from that mm. scene. And and I don't know why that is so powerful, but rather than hearing the running footsteps and stuff, all the sound goes and it's just the music and the scene in the uh, emergency room where they're trying to save her life is incredibly moving. I spoke to the director, the director was Simon Delaney, and years later I was saying to him, one of the things I most love about that scene is that the the extras in it, the doctors and all the rest of the st- the nursing staff are so good. And I said, I don't know how you got them such good extras. And he said, that's because they weren't extras. They were real medical staff. Wow. Because when they went to recce at the hospital, they were talking about how it would all work and so on and so forth. And And Simon had the bright idea of saying, well, look, nobody could do this better than you guys. Would you be willing to do it? And so they were actual doctors. And so when, for instance, the doctor calls it and says, you know, I'm calling it, it's 4 p.m., thanks, mm. guys, and all that, he knows, he's 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 acting in the sense that he is just recalling real moments where he's had to do that. The looks on the nurses' faces as they, I just, it just moves me to tears every time mm. because you just get this sense of them just thinking, damn, we lost this one. Rachel, Rachel, in there. Rachel, Rachel, in there. Well, oh my God, Adam, Rachel. Adam. Can, no, look. Let me just hang on. I'm sorry. You'll just have to wait till the doctors are finished before you can go. No, but, but Rachel. Rachel. 200 joules, everybody clear? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Left wing 200 joules again, 3 yeah, sure. diagonal. No output. No change in rhythm, keep going. Charging, everybody stand clear, off the bed, oxygen away. No, no pulse. Here. No pulse. No, no, no. Okay, everybody no, clear here. Oxygen away. Charging. Let's reassess. No, no okay, we can let CPR please. Oh, the tube the way. Just going to the tube. Oh, the oh, one minute down the lens in. CPR terminated at 4.43. Thank you very much, team. with me all these years later I think I told you I had a um, my sister had a boyfriend in America who watched the whole show and couldn't believe you he was trauma you traumatised an American man um, with, with those final <laughs> with those if, if final it wasn't moments. Donald Trump how did that come to be and were you happy with the end result and, and had you thought about bringing it back would you have done the same thing okay good question um, initially we were going to kill off Adam um mm because he'd already had cancer and I thought his cancer could recur. But then when we did the research, we discovered that actually it would have had to have been a completely secondary cancer. And in drama terms, that's just repeating something you've already done. Mm. Also, also the, you know, the show, it was Adam and Rachel at the heart. And if anything, you know, it's Adam is the central character. So it would have sucked the, center out of the whole show so in a way it was obvious when you thought about it it had to be the person most connected to him <laughs> the finger of fate hovered and pointed at rachel and said you like have those come. old lottery adverts that used to be on mm. <laughs> we never considered we'd be bringing the show back if i'd known 
we wanted to, I probably wouldn't have had the guts to kill her. But the reason we're bringing the show back is because we killed her. If we'd ended the show just with them, I don't know, leaving Manchester to start a new life in Singapore together, I don't think people would be that interested to find out what's happened to the characters since. Well, we just assume they were living living the high life in Singapore, and and that yeah, was that. Happy ever after. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, so, I know I absolutely don't regret it. I'm really glad we did now because I think it's why we're back. This is where we were living when you were born. I wish your mum could see an eye. She'd be so proud. I think of her every day, you know. Still miss her. She was magnificent. My greatest regret is that you've never known what it is to have a family, not property. I, I know it can't be the same with Angela, but when you come to stay with us in Singapore, I, I want you to feel like you're coming home. And revivals make me so nervous. Even some of my favourite shows have been revived and and not worked. Would the, was there ever a chance that you'd have written something and not liked it yourself and said, "We j- I just can't. We just can't do it. I'm not sullying the memory of the original show." Absolutely, absolutely. As I say, it took three attempts to get that first episode right, and we would not have put a script forward that we didn't think was good enough because. You know, even though it was 10 years or more since that show, when people say to me, oh, what have you written? That's the first thing I'd mention. And Mm. it's still got an amazing response. And what I really didn't want was that we did another series. People say to me, oh, what have you written? I say cold feet. And they say, oh, yeah, that used to be good. That's not worth the paycheck that comes with writing the show. So I absolutely wouldn't have done it. And it is interesting. You know, I, do you know the Gilmore Girls as a show? Yes, that's coming back on Netflix, isn't it? Yes. Have you seen the trailer for it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, go on. yes. Well, I, 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 didn't know. I didn't know that show, but my younger daughter loves it. So I've started, you know, I've been watched a heck of a lot of, ad, uh, of episodes simply because she has been. And yeah. it irritates them shit out of me but um, <laughs> it's the it's the rhythm and the fact they speak so quickly for no I, apparent reason isn't and occasionally it? you just want to go just shut up please <laughs> but, but um it is my guilty pleasure i do it's the sort of thing where it'll be uh it, it's on at half past five in australia and my daughter comes home from school and she might not even remember and i'll sort of say are we going to watch Gilmore girls but, um, <laughs> not for me obviously but i thought you'd <laughs> but, like a reminder and then i'll sit there criticizing it throughout but uh, i was just interested by the trailer for the new series makes me think wow that's really interesting because gilmore gills was never really rooted in reality it's this no. fictional little little america which doesn't really exist and it doesn't exist even more now than it didn't exist then <laughs> and yet the trailer suggests that they're still going to do this cutesy little town where everybody's nice and so on I'm, and I'm oppositely to you, shit. it's four episodes, and it'd be, you know, on Netflix, you could do that in a day, and it'd be done, and that's the end of it. You've been in Australia, what have been your drama, what are your drama highlights when you look, other shows, and shows that perhaps inspired you, what do you always hang your hat on as one of your favourites, Gilmore Girls aside, unless you want to <laughs> include it. Um, well, I do tend to look to uh, American television. Uh, I, I think the storytelling in American television is absolutely superlative. Um, so the shows that I, you know, if you, you trawl back far enough, the first show that just, well, actually, the first show that blew me out of the water was a British show, which was um, uh, the Biderbeck Affair and the Biderbeck Tapes. You're too young. I, I need to look at that. Yeah, I'm sorry about well, that. No, no, no. no, 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 no I, I envy you. Um, but uh, it was written by Alan Plater. It was a comedy drama starring James Bolan and Barbara Flynn. And it was very, it was gentle, uh, but it was the first time I'd really seen humour in drama. And it sort of made me realise that you could mix those two genres. I was probably a teenager when it was first on, so I wasn't actively thinking this, but it obviously just seeped into 
into yeah, me. Yeah, it was there somewhere. Yeah, and in fact, James Bolam is in the new series of Cold Feet, and it was. I know. Com- was that a bit of was that a bit of a get then for for you? Oh, I'd written this character just of an old man, and they sort of said, "Well, you know, who are you thinking casting wise?" And I never do, and I sort of, I don't know. And they said, "What about James Bolam?" And it's like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> And my first, thing, my first comment was, surely you wouldn't do it. And they said, well, you know, we can try. And oh, wow, that's fantastic to me. So sorry, I've got off the track. But mostly American shows. So Hill Street Blues, The Shield, Deadwood. Deadwood is incredible. Oh my god! <laughs> and the what? production values in that show. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I'll tell you the other show that I still watch and rewatch because it just doesn't date is the Larry Sanders show. Interesting, very Which, interesting. To me, that's not, it's not a sitcom, that's a comedy drama. And that is the precursor for all the shows like The Office, uh, all those half hours, which, uh, you know, half hour tends to be the sitcom format. Yeah. But Larry Sanders' show is so much more Cause than that. Because Deadwood's kind of underappreciated, isn't it? It never seems to be on any list of the greatest TV shows or anything. But it, it really should be. It's sort of a hidden gem. Oh, I and, think so. I, um, uh, those those lists are often not because of the, I I did not love the wire. I I can watch and enjoy the wire, and I can watch and enjoy Breaking Bad. Is it one of? Mm. Is it as good as it's reputed to be? I don't. Well, think I've only it, watched both of them once, and it'd be interesting to see on repeat viewing whether they they're just a once in a moment thing or whether they well, still hold true. up. I haven't gone back to Deadwood because I fear I wouldn't enjoy it as much second time around, sort of thing. But and just, have you used your daughter as inspiration for the for the teenagers in the show? Is it easy for you to find uh, Adam and and Matthew's voice and and the girls as well? Was that easy enough? I think writing kids is really difficult because uh, in in real life their conversation of, of, of them and their friends when they're with their friends it's peppered with like. So <laughs> yeah, and that always overtakes me. So oh, yeah. Well, I was I was once driving. This was a few years ago when they were much younger. But I was driving them, and they, you know, I was the taxi driver. I was invisible. They were just chatting, <laughs> and and after, and I sort of was just did a little experiment, and I and I said to them, uh, I just butted in. And I said, girls, in the last minute, how many times do you think you've said the word like? Because I had actually yeah. counted. And uh, <laughs> and it was something like twenty five times, utterly ridiculous. Now, if you did that on yeah. TV, it wouldn't work because it would be too self conscious and too obvious. Um, it would seem like you were mocking teenagers in a way, it, wouldn't it? If, ex- if that's exactly that. right. So, so I don't do that when I'm writing the younger characters in Cold Feet. But the younger characters in Cold Feet don't really talk like young people. Matthew came to see me last night. You'll get a call. I'm going to be expelled. Oh, Matt. Why? A teacher caught me smoking. Weed. What, and they're going to kick you out for that? It wasn't the first time. I thought it'd make me look cool. Any other kids, they'd accept me. I saw you with your mates. Those boys you were messing with. They bully me. I don't have any friends. I don't feign. I never have. I've always hated it. Oh, Matthew. But it has been inspired by my kids and their friends because sort of some of the stuff in you know in the first episode uh matthew was in trouble for um dealing or selling nitrous oxide to his mates well you know a, a year ago i don't think i was even aware of nitrous oxide and then it no. sort of uh, lumbered into our lives so uh so yeah my kids basically replicating them and their friends i've wanted to speak to you for years and i really appreciate you giving me this opportunity and i i i've seen the second and third episode and i I think it just goes from strength to strength and i wish you all the best i'm sure the ratings weren't just curiosity i'm sure they're going to carry on oh thank you luke i really appreciate your support for the show and uh I'm sorry, I, I said 10 minutes, but now looking at the time, I've been rabbiting on for bloody ages, but it's been a joy to, <laughs> it's 
it's, it's lovely to talk to someone who actually is interested in the in the.